Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game Esoteric and our continuing series, Emulation Night School, where I show you some of the most popular emulators you can run on your Windows PC, how to set them up, and how to use all the different settings and enhancements to get the best experience. And I've been getting a lot of questions about PlayStation Portable, so that's what we're going to be doing today. How to get PPSSPP set up, how to change all the different diverse settings you might want to move around, and how to have a good time. Before I get too far involved though, do me a huge favor, go down below, hit like and subscribe, and ring that notification bell, it definitely helps us out. And if you feel so inclined to want to support the channel, we got a Patreon link down below as well. And I now offer that $10 Emulation Night School tier if you need direct access to me to solve a complex problem. But PlayStation Portable is an awesome handheld, but honestly the hardware is getting a little bit tired even with screen mods, so having something like this running on Windows is absolutely amazing. You'll see here if you go to the PPSSPP website, you're going to see a download button for either regular or gold. Just be aware that gold does nothing extra except make the developer feel good and give him some change, which is a very noble thing. People do this stuff for free, so maybe think about buying gold, but you don't have to. If you click download here, this website also gives you that weird pop-up window. Clear that out completely. And then you're going to see PPSSPP free for Windows, for Mac, for iOS, different versions. Obviously, we're going Windows here. You will see that there's an installer as well as a zip file. I'll download both, but I always use the zip. That way I can just manage the files more effectively in my opinion. Milo is totally up to you, but I'm going to be showing you how to deal with the zip file. So we'll download them both, but we'll use that zip. Just be aware that both do exist. And if you have an ARM-based Windows PC, you get that ARM64 version, but we're not talking about that today. Now, just a heads up, PPSSPP does not require any BIOS files whatsoever. It's been white-roomed, and it will run without that BIOS. So that's a step compared to all the other tutorials we've shown you so far that we don't need to deal with. Now that we have that zip file, we'll just go ahead and unpack it wherever we want this to live. It's not installing to any particular directory, so wherever you unzip this is where the installation instance for this emulator is going to be. I just have this on my desktop for the video demo. You can put it wherever you would like. Just make sure you put it somewhere safe so you don't accidentally delete it. Once we've unzipped the file, we can get rid of the zip. We are completely done with it. So once we go into the PPSSPP folder, you're going to see two executables, one for 64-bit and one for standard. If you got a 64-bit setup, both are going to work. If you got a 32-bit setup, only the one that ends in .exe without the 64 will work. I'm going to make a new folder and call it games. You can put your PSP games that you own and have dumped wherever you would like to put them. Just make sure you put them all in the same folder because we're going to target that folder from the emulator. I'm just going to go ahead and move over Castlevania, the Dracula X Chronicles, to the games folder I just created, and then I will show you why you want to just put the ISO file in there, not folders. If we look under games, we see the game we want right here, and it does have the .iso file extension, so this should work 100% perfectly fine once we get into the emulator. So we'll go ahead and move a folder in there so I can show you why this is not the best means to do it. It will work, it'll just be slightly more annoying. If we go over to the instance of PPSSPP we're using for here, the demo, you're going to see that if I go into games, Castlevania is ready to launch, but God of War and Tekken 6 are nested in folders. We don't want that. We want all of the ISO files in the same folder in games. That way, when we do launch this again, we're going to see now that all of the games we have added are all on one screen. It's just going to make it easier. Under Recents will be all the games you recently played. Under Games will be every single game you have installed to that folder. And under Homebrews and Demos, there's Homebrews and Demos, and we're not going to be going over those. But you'll see on the right-hand side of the screen here, we also have a Settings menu. I'm going to go over some and then more later. On the back end, it directs to Direct3D11. That is perfectly fine. You can pop Vulcan on if you want, but honestly, the default back end seems to work perfectly fine for me. Under device, it's going to pick your GPU by default. Now, if you have an APU and a GPU, something that has both, you'll want to default to your GPU. And the biggest setting is going to be rendering resolution. This is the internal rendering for 3D assets on the PlayStation Portable. That's going to be where you get 99% of your visual enhancements. And if you want it to be full screen, just go ahead and check the full screen box and it'll launch that way. But as we get into God of War here, I did leave the frame counter on. Right now I'm doing this at a 1080p scale and I'm getting perfect performance. Now be aware that this is hardware dependent. I've got an i9-12900K so that's going to give me a ton of CPU grunt to be able to do something like this along with my GPU. I can even go up to 4K resolutions and everything works perfectly fine. I am at a lock 60 frames a second. 
Just keep changing the internal rendering resolution until you find a setting that works for your system where you're getting the proper frame rates. But let's take a look right here. We'll go into settings and we'll on the fly change the rendering resolution. And once you exit this menu, you'll see a quick flicker and you'll be in that new resolution. So we're going to move from 1080p all the way up to 4K, which is a hell of a lot larger than you would expect for a pixel count. The amount of pixels goes up substantially. And at least on my system, I am still running this at a locked 60 to 61 frames per second. There's a little bit of frame timing here, but otherwise I'm getting my 60. But you can play around whatever you want. If you wanted to see the original PlayStation Portable internal resolution, set it to 1x and you're going to see just how different it looks. This is how it would look on real PlayStation Portable hardware. If you want that look, you totally can have that. But then you can just dial it right back up to 4K and you'll see instantaneously how much more detail we're getting in textures and models and everything else. It doesn't change the polygon count, it just changes the rendering resolution, but it makes a big difference and at least on my system, going all the way to 4K is going to be working perfectly fine for all games. I went all the way up to a 10x scale and saw no dips in resolution whatsoever. Now do be aware you also have save states in this. On my system I have an Xbox One controller set up and the home button brings up the quick menu. You can save your state and then if you ever want to go back to it, you just go ahead and hit that home button again, go to load state, and the emulator is going to bring you right back to the last process that occurred when you did a save state. Just be aware that that does exist. Now going through the rest of the settings on frame rate control frame skipping, you only ever want to touch that if you can't run a game at the proper frame rate for the resolution you've chosen. Dial back the frame rate until you get smooth speed, don't start skipping frames. Here you'll see you can render duplicate frames of 60 hertz. you can do other software and hardware items, but honestly I leave everything as is. And you're going to see that there's texture scaling and it is off by default, and you can do whatever you want with this setting, but I recommend you leave it off. 2D elements are not going to scale as well with internal rendering resolution. You'll see here the Tekken 6 menu is a little bit blurry. It just doesn't scale everything the same way. Now if you try to use some of that upscaling for those textures, you're going to see just what happens. It becomes a blurry, smeary, weird looking mess. If you like it, that's totally fine. No judgments. I just say you leave it off. The filtering is set at 16x, so leave it as default, you'll be perfectly fine with that. And pretty much every other setting under graphics outside of that internal rendering resolution, you can leave as is, and I'll just knock the frame rate counter on here. It is good for troubleshooting if you're not getting the right frame rate. Under controls, you're going to see calibrate analog stick, calibrate that if you need to, but you can change the bindings of all of the controllers. It'll automatically see what control you have plugged in as long as it is synced and it'll appear here. So if you want to remap the circle button, you can 100% do that. But if you scroll down, there's going to be a bunch of unmap buttons that you can use if you want to sit at your PC and use a keyboard or change things around. The save state load and the save state save are not bound to any keys and I love putting those on page up and page down. That way I can quick toggle versus going into the actual menu. If you want to add a button, hit plus. It'll prompt you to hit whatever button you want to bind to that exact entry, and then you're good to go. So you'll see page up, page down, save state, and save load. Now, if you get into any sort of situation whatsoever where you screw this up too much, just click restore defaults, and everything will go back to the mapping that PPSSPP thinks you need, and then you can rebind whatever you want from there. Now, going back to the menu, we have an audio setting as well. Enable sound is checked. You definitely want to do that, or else you're going to be playing mute. You also have a global volume adjustment. It seems perfectly fine at 10 and then just use your PC settings or your headphone settings to dial up or down the volume. That's what I recommend. Under networking, you can technically network this emulator, but that's not emulation night school level. That's a 401 level class. If you want to see that, leave me a comment down below. And under tools, if you want to set up retro achievements, you 100% can. I never use them whatsoever. System, you can change around the language to whatever language you want, but you're definitely listening to an English language tutorial, so I think you're going to be perfectly fine. And under PSP memory stick, it automatically defaults to being inserted with 16 gigabytes. That is going to be plenty for all of your save files, which will automatically save when you do it in-game, and you also have the save states. But something like Tekken 6 here, I am running this at a 10x resolution, it is higher than 4K, I'm getting fluid 60 frames per second, responsive controls, everything is perfectly fine on my system. But if you're running something like an i5 from like the 5 or 6000 series generations for Intel, you're probably not going to get that same result. But you see here, I'm going to dial it right into 10x on my screen right here, and I'm going to leave the frame counter up so you know exactly what I'm doing. I'm pretty sure you all believe me anyway, but you can see here at a 
10x resolution scale, it works perfectly fine. And that's what I love about this emulator. It is very resource and intensive and it gives you so many options. But we can go right back to the 1x scale, the internal PlayStation Portal rendering resolution, and you can get that original PlayStation Portable look on your screen. You get to pick and decide what you want it to look like, and that's the great part about software emulation. It gives you options. You'll see here at 10x internal scale, 60 frames a second, everything's working perfectly fine. Just be aware that sometimes scaling the internal resolution isn't always the best thing to do. You're going to see here that Castlevania Dracula X Chronicles runs at a locked 30 frames per second, and that's perfectly fine. But when we actually get Richter up here with that background effect, the internal resolution, you see two Richters and two platforms floating around doing very weird things. If we go back into 1x, you're going to see that now blends. It was an effect that the developers used to make it look like there was heat distortion, but when you actually have a higher resolution, Resolution, that effect breaks down because the pixel blending at the lower resolution is not getting you the same effect. You'll see here when I jump down, that double image is going to go away once we're in front of something that doesn't have that blending. So just be aware, resolution scaling not always what you want to do. But if you pay attention to this tutorial, if you didn't skip ahead, you follow all the directions, you're playing PlayStation Portable on your PC, you've got all the scaling options, and you're having a fun time. If you get stuck and I can help you quickly in the comments, leave it down below. Otherwise, the Patreon link has the more direct contact to me help. But if you do this, you're going to be playing PlayStation Portable, discovering some awesome hidden gems. Sure that, I'll have another episode of Emulation Night School next week, and I'll have videos throughout the week. But we're done. You're playing PSP, and we're good. Bye-bye.